Now, one of the easiest and most cost-effective ways of enlarging a design is by using an overhead projector. Now, many years ago, you'd see these widely used throughout schools and conference centres. But the way technology has advanced, most schools and conference centres are selling them off to get rid of them. You can even pick them up at second-hand shops, and they range from $25 up to $150 for the later models. The one that I'm currently using, I paid about $50 for, and I bought that back in about the late 1980s. Now, when you're using an overhead projector, you use a piece of acetate, which is like a thin piece of plastic, and you buy these at office supply stores, and you can buy them in packs and in some cases singly. And all you do is you take this home and you run it through your, uh, you run it through your laser printer, and you print the design directly to this, and then you just lay it on the surface of the projector, and it projects it up on the wall. So it's quite simple. Now, when you want a larger design, you would take the projector further away. When you want a, a design smaller, you would bring it closer to the wall. Now, if I'm going to be wanting to create a stencil with this, I would get a thin piece of card, tape it to the wall, and trace around the outside of it, take it down, and then cut that card out and I'd have my stencil. So it's good for creating hearts or any other simple shapes as well. Now, if I'm using a colour image, I can, with the colour copier, the laser copier at home, I can colour print onto that uh, acetate and that would allow me to do more intricate designs like the, the uh, internal parts of the bird. And I could also mark what colours are where as well. So I can actually put that directly onto my Marmox board or Weedy board or Marine Ply or MDF. So you can actually stencil, you can actually trace directly onto the board and if you want to mark the colours because uh, you may be using a colour printout on the laser acetate, then you can mark that at the same time, making it quite easy. Now you don't have to use acetate if it's going to be a simple shape like a heart or a circle. You can just print that on, out onto plain copy paper and then cut it out and project that up onto the wall and trace around it. So it's also good for simple shapes using plain colour, uh, using plain paper. Now, I have gone into more detail on a, one of my early videos on using an overhead projector, so I'll link that up the top here, and you can have a look at that if you're interested. But if you can pick up an overhead projector quite cheaply, it's well worth the investment. Now, a very good online program to use to enlarge your design is Rapid Resizer. It's very simple to use, and you do have to pay for it. Well, you can have an experiment with it, uh, free of charge, but you just can't print out your enlarged pages, which kind of is a bit pointless, but it's good, I suppose, if you want to just uh, test it out, make sure it's going to be uh, simple enough for you to use. But it is quite simple. So there's three tier plans. One's the basic, one's designer, and it, of course, goes up higher in price and you get more features. And then there's the pro, which is top of the line. And of course, that's the most expensive. But if you're just going to be uh, wanting uh, to enlarge your design and text and picture stencil makers, then the basic one is for you. That's the one that I'm on. And US dollars at, at the time of filming was uh, quarterly at $11.99 or yearly at $39, which is a saving of $9. So for most people, if you're just enlarging, this is the one that you go on. So now what we'll do is we'll go uh, back to the home page and we'll log in and I should be automatically logged in. I've uploaded the image already, but I'll show you how easy it is to upload. I just click on there. I click to where the image is stored. In my case, it's in pictures, but yours could be on your desktop or anywhere else on your computer. Okay, it's uploading the image here. And how long it takes is dependent on the file size, but it shouldn't take too long. Now, at the moment, I've got this at 531 by 450 in height. This is gonna take up six pages. But what I'm going to do is actually make this uh, 400, and that's now four pages. Make sure that that is ticked and it's proportional, because if you don't tick that, uh, it can skew the image where it might be 400 by 400 or 400 by 500. So it works it out automatically, as long as you make sure that is, that is pushed there. Now, there are other areas you can go in, but really you're not going to be using those most times, but you can experiment with them. 
The one that's very, very important is this one here, crop. When you uh, have a design, you need to make sure, and I'll go into that just to show you. You need to make sure that your design is cropped right to the edge of the image. And the reason being is when you have a design, you might have a design where there's a lot of white around the outside. And when it comes to enlarging that image, the program will take that into consideration, which you don't want it to, because that will affect the sizing, unless you want that white in there. So what you do is you move these lines to the very edge of your image. Mine's already been done because my image was cropped to the size before I even came into this program. But that's the area used there to ensure that your image is cropped to the size so that when it comes to printing out and taking into consideration what size you wanted, those pages will be printed accurately to the size that you need. So anyway, um, I will skip that and I'll skip that. And then we go back to the size here and it's going to take up four pages. So once we have that correct, uh, and you make sure the paper size is correct, I'm going to go A4 because that's what the printer has in it, then we can then just print it out. So now I'll print the button, I'll push the print button I should say. That's just telling me to make sure that the printer is at 100% and not fit to page, which it's not. And then we go print. And then the printer will start and it'll start printing. And hopefully that's our design. Yep. Okay, now what I'll do is I will now take the pages out, cut them up, and uh, join them with sticky tape, and we'll see, uh, we'll see what it looks like when it's finished. Okay, it turned out really well. Uh, the measurements were correct, which is really good. Now, just a couple of things. Uh, when you get the sheets from the printer, you'll find that around each of these sheets will be a dotted line, uh, like a, a, a cut mark or a trim mark. Now, you can trim that off and butt join the pieces together and sticky tape them and that will work quite well without a problem. However, what I like to do, I find that if you leave an overlap, I find it's a bit easy to work with. So I tend to trim off three sides of each of the pieces of paper and I leave one side with the actual line on as well as the edge of the paper. I find this works really, really well when I'm trying to align the paper up. Now this is just my personal preference. You don't have to do it this way. So once I've aligned the paper up, I then sticky tape it down like you would normally. I just find that works really well for my needs. Now the other thing too is that if I'm going to transfer this image onto a piece of marine ply or MDF or whatever, whatever substrate, I can apply uh, carbon paper on the substrate or I can apply it on the back of here. Just apply it onto the back. And then I tape this down and then I go over those lines and that will transfer onto the substrate. And I find that works quite well too. So anyway, this is another way of enlarging a design and transferring it to a substrate. So I hope you've taken something away from the video. If you have any comments, put them down in the bottom of the comment section of the YouTube channel. You may already have a better way of doing this or you may have another program that's equally as good uh, that you might want to uh, suggest. And I'll see you in the next video. Enjoy.